Peter Quinlan is a meteorologist with Global News. Thank you for joining me today, Peter. Uh, we've been seeing quite a bit of uh, watches and warnings coming at us from various sources. Uh, can you tell us what the season has been like so far? Yeah, we are kind of just getting into the main heart of summer severe weather season. It usually kicks off in June, sometimes a little bit uh, later in May at times. Uh, but really the main brunt and the most active time is right through the month of July into early August. So even the end of June, that's why we've been seeing that severe weather activity ramp up. There's a few reasons for that. These are the hottest days of the year. These are also some of the most humid days of the year. So we've had the June rains and humidity allows air to rise a little bit faster. And that's when we get the uh, storm development where you get those uh, big buildup of the cumulonimbus clouds. So that's kind of why this is the time of year where we're uh, in the most ripe conditions. Also, the crops are right. We have a process uh, called evapotranspiration where some of the moisture from the crops goes into the air, further fueling this buoyancy that creates these strong storms. With the weather warnings that we've had, have we seen anything that's been particularly destructive around? We have seen some tornadoes uh, to the west of Lloydminster in uh, that area southeast of Edmonton. Uh, we don't have any major reports of damage. You'll remember, I believe it was about a year ago uh, in the Carstairs area of Alberta, we had some pretty destructive tornadoes or uh, one in particular. Uh, so we have seen some tornadoes that touched down in fields and because the majority of the area across the prairies where we are kind of what we call Canada's tornado alley uh, is fields, that's usually where most of these tornadoes touchdown. So that's kind of what we want. That's the ideal scenario. Uh, if we do see a tornado go through a community or even just a few farm buildings, they can be incredibly destructive because they can have winds in excess of 300 kilometers per hour uh, ripping apart buildings. So that's what we don't want to see. And at this point, we don't have any major destruction from tornadoes on the prairies reported as of yet, but that can change. We had a fair amount of rain over the long weekend. Uh, are we going to see any more of that in the short term? Whenever we have thunderstorms, we always have the potential, Leanne, of seeing heavy downpours. So those are kind of almost impossible for us to predict in advance. That said, looks like we could see a stormy or day on Friday, and there's always that chance a random pop-up thunderstorm can develop and sit over the city for a number of hours and dump sometimes a month's worth of rain. At this point, it doesn't look like that'll be the case. And actually, as we head into the weekend and next week, we're going to see a big ridge that basically deflects all those storms into the territories and we'll see a big blast of heat. Some people will be happy to hear that. We'll be in those uh, even mid twenties, upper twenties, potentially over the weekend into next week. So it will bring in a big blast of summer weather it will just deflect those storms to the north. So uh, areas that need moisture, we won't be getting a ton at least into the first half of July. With some of the severe weather that some areas in southern Saskatchewan and other places have had, have we seen much crop damage or anything like that? Yeah, that is the good news. With a lack of storms comes a lack of hail. And of course, as the crops uh, mature, that is can be devastating to uh, area farmers and uh, producers. We don't want to see that. Uh, and yeah, so it is good news in that sense. On the flip side, though, that increases the fire danger rating. Uh, we may see fire bans put in place. And then, of course, we also need moisture for those fields because irrigation is pretty limited uh, in the Midwest region. So uh, yeah, we were hoping and praying for more moisture later in July. It just looks like the first half will probably be quite dry. You touched on the humidity becoming an increasing factor. Uh, will it be impacting people a little bit more? I know some people can't handle it. Yeah, exactly. You hit the nail on the head there. We are into a much more moist air mass. And as a result of the crops adding that moisture into the air, it does make it feel at times two to five degrees warmer than normal. So when we get to those upper 20s and mid 20s later this week, or I should say into the weekend and next week, we will see humid X values making it feel more like the low to even at times potentially mid 30s. And that's when we start talking about the risk of heat related illnesses. So, and cause you just don't really get that relief and it's fairly dry in Lloydminster, but uh, people do need those cooler overnight temperatures as well. And we may or may not see those every day. So yeah, the moisture definitely added to it, adding to it. And then when we sweat, uh, less of our sweat evaporates into the air because the air already has enough moisture. Uh, so that is another factor as well. Well, thanks for joining me today, Peter, and filling me in on the weather picture as we get into July here. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me.